So hi Tom, welcome to Escape the Rat Race Radio. How are you doing today? Yeah, very well. Thank you for having me. And uh, sorry, this is our second attempt at this call. A few uh, gremlins in the system. In my <laughs> end. No problem at all. So why don't we kick things off, Tom, and you let everyone know what business you're in and what specifically that involves on a day to day basis. Yeah, so my job title on LinkedIn is a YouTube rainmaker, which is a totally made up <laughs> bit of marketing speak but uh, in real terms I'm a, a YouTube consultant uh, that helps people to grow their YouTube channels get more views more subscribers uh, more leads and ultimately make a business from YouTube yeah brilliant stuff cool so we split today's uh, interview into three parts Tom so part one where you were so um, would you let our listeners know where you used to work and what you used to do yeah, so I originally uh, ran the YouTube channels for uh, the BBC here in London. Um, totally blagged my way into a job there. I had no YouTube experience, um, but I had been working for the company for their sales division uh, for the last five years. So I knew the content, I knew the contacts. You know, luckily I had a very strong network within the company. So I managed to blag. Uh, a job running the BBC's YouTube channels. I had never uploaded a single video uh, in my life. Uh, managed to kind of learn the buttons <laughs> that you needed to press uh, in the first few days. And then really I've been trying to master the platform for the last seven years really. So um, I worked my way up uh, to leading the whole YouTube operation uh, after about five years, you know, some really impressive uh, achievements. So launched the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. That's now at a million subs. I launched the official Sherlock channel. Uh, took the official Top Gear channel from 750,000 subscribers to 3.5 million in just a year. Uh, you know, a few other kind of million subscriber channels under my belt. So quite a lot. Uh, and then uh, after a while, uh, I joined another company called Endemol, who are the uh, the largest uh, independent TV production company in the world. They make stuff like uh, Big Brother and Deal or No Deal, MasterChef, uh, a lot of kind of big TV formats. Um, so I was brought in to be the head of audience development, which is basically... Um, anything that's audience facing. So that was YouTube and social media. Um, so turned around a couple of their YouTube channels that, that weren't doing so well. A uh, big example would be the official Mr. Bean channel. I'm sure a lot of you know, your audience would have heard of Mr. Bean. He's, you know, well known all around the world. Um, and he was, that channel was doing about 10 million views a month, which to most people, you know, sounds a lot and it is a lot. Um, but it was kind of, at the bottom, it was kind of the worst it had performed for a number of years. Uh, and I managed to turn it around with, with some of the strategies that I implemented. Uh, and within nine months, that was doing like 110 million views a month. So, wow, that's serious, serious a, a numbers. A big turnaround. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. so so it sounds a little bit like, Tom, you know, in a way, it sounds a little bit like my career. And, uh, you know, you actually, yeah, you know, you enjoyed what you were doing for a long period of time you're successful and uh, at what point then did you realize that you didn't want to work for somebody else any longer and what were some of the first steps that you took about changing your situation yeah you know it was a dream job and you know to anyone kind of working in the industry I'd, I'd reached the top of the industry but I think I'd pretty much decided uh, that I didn't want to you know work for someone else before I'd even started that job but you know I can actually it sounds strange but I can remember the day like it was yesterday because um I returned from uh maternity leave paternity leave yeah paternity leave so um I'd had a couple of weeks off after the birth of my my first son and um my wife I'd left my wife at home with the baby you know three weeks old in a flat up the stairs it was quite a traumatic birth uh you know there's no way she was getting up and down those stairs she was told she wasn't even allowed to like lift a vacuum cleaner you know you know and i'd had to do uh, a 90 minute commute each way and it was just so just it was so destroying that day it was so tough and i sat down at my desk 
and I just like so depressed just like I cannot do this for the rest of my life I cannot it wasn't only the commute but you know I just can't work for the man for the rest of my life so that day I gave myself uh, five years uh, to build something uh, for myself at that point I had no idea what uh, you know I wasn't working on YouTube at that point but I knew that I had to do something so I gave myself five years uh, and I missed that by six months uh, but still oh, we'll, uh, we'll come on to that. Proud. yeah well so you set that goal so so what was it and, and when was it that you really settled upon a decision as to what exactly you were going to focus on to generate additional money outside of a job so that you could actually quit yeah so I'd um I'd been following the likes of you know like Pat Flynn and uh, the guys over the tropical NBA uh, for a couple of years since I think uh, 2010, something like that. So I'd already kind of been, you know, what people would call a entrepreneur. You know, I've been researching about passive income and making income, side income, making money online, stuff like that. And um, didn't really know what what path to take. But um, it became pretty apparent to me once I started working for the YouTube team at the BBC that there wasn't really a resource for people like me that were just getting started out with YouTube, either professionally or just starting their own channel to go to, to learn like how on earth do you grow a YouTube channel? How on earth, like what, what, how should you make the thumbnails, which are the kind of little images that you upload for a video? How should you title a video? What kind of description should you give it? Like how often should you upload? So I decided to scratch my own itch and build a resource uh, for people that were wanting to learn how to take their YouTube channels to the next level, basically. And so uh, well, that was what I decided. It probably took me about a year to take any action on that. Mm. Uh, you know, an absolute king of the procrastinators. Uh, so it took me probably six months to a year to actually take action. Right. Um, and so after, did it, you, and yeah, after you did take action then, what were some of the critical decisions that you had to make or some of the parameters that you set yourself to help you decide when exactly was going to be the right time for you to quit? And can you remember your escape the rat race date, Tom? Oh, yeah, I remember the date very, very well. Um, but to go back a step, I'd, I, you know, it took me a long time to... To, so my my thought process was I'll build an audience and I'll monetize later. And anyone listening to this today, please don't do that. <laughs> you know, I think I could have really sped up the process if I had started to release products and do more affiliate marketing marketing early on. So if you're listening to this, I definitely say monetize from day one if you can. Uh, and don't train people that everything's going to be free, which is pretty much what I did. So it took me a while to build that audience. Um, and one of the reasons that I left the BBC was because there was kind of a conflict of interest of me working on my own business uh, and running their channels. Um, and I made it very clear to my new employer, you know, even in the first interview, I'm running my own business. If that's a problem, just end the interview now. And they, they kind of they kind of saw the entrepreneurial benefit of having a, an employee with that kind of um, skill set, but also, you know, someone who's hungry and mm. wants to wants to better themselves. So um, interesting. After a while, I, you know, again, I was I was really happy at the job, but I kind of felt like I I was kind of just floating, not really getting, to, you know, taking the next step. So yeah. I gave myself a year and said you are leaving on this date, no matter what. So you better get your button gear and start really generating some revenue or at least building the foundations that revenue will start to come in. Wow. And what was that date then that you uh, you said goodbye? Well, the, that date is actually this January that's about to, <laughs> that's about right. to come. Right. So I actually pulled the trigger um, earlier. So my last date was the uh, 4th of June. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm pretty new escapee, shall we say. So yeah. yeah, I'm about, I'm about three months in today, I'd say. Fantastic. Okay. So that moves us nicely into part two. Where are you now? So Tom, 
How long ago was it now since quit the, quit the rat race? Well, you've just answered that. So uh, <laughs> you are you are fresh. And so can you share with us three of the biggest realizations in that short space of time that you've had since transitioning from being an employee to becoming a business owner? What are some of the three biggest for you? Yeah, for me, without doubt, the absolute biggest realization is you think you're going to have so much more time. You know, I've had a to-do list in Evernote as long as my arm. Um, some of the stuff on that to-do list has been since I first ever installed Evernote four or five years ago, and it's never been done. And I assumed that after two days, I would have gone through that list and will, you know, be starting to really dig in. But you just don't have the, the time that you thought because the old everyday crud that you're kind of dredging through is just replaced by new stuff so you, new stuff just gets added to the to-do list all the time so without doubt the biggest realization is you don't have as much time uh as you want to and that really leads into my second realization that prioritization or at least self-prioritization is really really hard because you know coming from the corporate world you know, you need to get that report to me by next week. You've got a monthly report to create. Uh, you know, there's a, a schedule to keep to. You have a, a bi-weekly meeting. You know, the prioritization is kind of handed to you on a plate to a certain extent. You know, I was working with a lot of, um, what's the word? I was working with a lot of autonomy, but still, you know, there were kind of set deadlines and expectations that people expected certain results by. So prioritization was pretty easy. You know, it's who's shouting the loudest and who's the most important that's shouting, answer those people first. But when it's you shouting at yourself and <laughs> you're giving yourself 30,000 different orders, it can be really hard to um, to know what to do next and, you know, what is really the most important. Um, and thirdly, I think is... Uh, kind of a blessing and a curse is that you know the main reason for me wanting to to leave and start my own business is so that I could work from home and spend more time with my family which is you know that's my why is is to spend more time and don't miss my boys karate gradings or sports day or parents evening or nativity play whatever it is but the flip side of that is I've I've left the rat race smack bang in the middle of the school holidays <laughs> and you know there's a certain guilt with having to say to your kids right now I can't play with you now because daddy's got to go to work daddy's got a call uh you know I've got a you know I can't come with you to the barbecue because um you know I've got a video to publish something like that so just you know really things that I wasn't expecting because you know I know that I knew that money was going to be a challenge starting off, but that's not a surprise because you know I'm always going to worry about money no matter how much I've got of it. But these other these these other kind of factors were stuff that I just was, wasn't really expecting. Yeah, no, that's really really good points there. Really, uh, I think very much uh, you've hit the nail on the head in that. You don't know until you take that jump just what it's going to be like. I mean, you can read as many books, but I had exactly the same experience in that. That first day when you wake up and you're like, hey, I'm the boss of me. It's like what you've been dreaming of for so long. And actually you realize, wow, actually it's pretty difficult to work out like what actually I need to focus on. And as you say, when you haven't got anyone like beating you to get stuff done, it's like you can procrastinate all day long and that can happen for weeks and yeah. months. And some people, you know, they just really, really struggle with that. And that's why I found actually now working at co-working spaces and getting out of the house almost feels like you're getting up to go to a job but the thing is you're in control you decide when you get into the office but that routine actually is something you really miss when you don't have that structure of uh, of the nine to five yeah, yeah i think i'm definitely gonna have to try and you know get into town uh get into the center one day a week uh at least just to not only just to make sure i'm getting stuff done but also just you know my world has gone from an office of you know thousands of people to my office yeah. which is my kids old playroom which is a tiny little box yeah. um so you know just stop myself going crazy but yeah also, also something that's really strange that i did you know i didn't realize is that you know this is a big goal of mine that i've been working towards for five years at least and been dreaming of for even longer than that but you expect there's going to be like a massive 
I can't even describe it. You, you might feel it. You might realize what I'm saying, but you expect the first day there to be this just kind of like, I don't know. It's like you're breathing different air, but it's it's not. You just you just kind of have to get on with it. So you just it's almost like life just goes on. Nothing's really changed. It's just that now your job is for yourself. You're working for yourself. Uh, and I kind of was, I don't know what I was, I don't know what I was expecting. I, maybe I was expecting the, you know, the sun to be brighter and the air to smell differently. And the, I don't know, but um, I might be going, am I, am I talking a load of rubbish here? But I just, <laughs> there's not like, a, I, yeah, I just, I just can't describe it. But I was, ex, I was just expecting there to be this kind of, different feeling but it's almost like you haven't got time to sit and smell the roses like you've got a job to do you've got work to do and you know you've you've got to put food on the table now so you know don't don't sit there you know being all proud of yourself you know now go out and really kind of prove yourself yeah and and for those listening who maybe you know are approaching this i would say this is where the value of having the right network of people around you so that you're not just jumping as you say from one very structured, busy environment, lots of other team members to just suddenly waking up, working from a room at home, because that can really mess with your head and get t- take a long time to really adjust to that. So when you've got a good network, when you've got mentors as well, who you can call up in those early days and say, look, you know, what the hell should I be doing? Then that's so important. So part three, where you want to get to, Tom, did you set yourself any goals or targets when you decided to leave your job and start your own business? I know it's early days, but have you got close to reaching any of those yet? Yeah, well, I I, I kind of hit some of them in the early days. But the, the thing is that I learned very early on that I the business model that I thought I would be kind of growing you know that idea changed within like two weeks it was like that's not the business I want to grow and I need I actually took a really tough decision to stop working with a a very big client that was covering all of my costs it was very financially secure and I took the the kind of another jump to basically say you know I'd rather take the financial risk in the short term to build the business that I want to build long term so that I don't have to kind of reverse engineer it later and try and kind of back out of the business that I've built. Um, so for the first couple of months, I did hit the kind of goals that I'd set. But now I've kind of even like I feel like this month, you know, I've kind of started again, again. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. So the kind of goals that I've set, I've had to adapt kind of as as my my kind of vision for the business has changed um but what i what i feel is really important is that i feel like i'm really laying the foundations now to build something special and build something that's gonna have a legacy and you know um help a lot of people other than just me yeah fantastic and do you feel now that you've got greater potential to achieve your bigger life goals now that you've got more control over your time yeah absolutely so really for me you know this this was my goal was to be able to work from home so i you know i don't need to be the next richard branson warren buffett whoever it may be um i just need to make it work now and let it be sustainable and then beyond beyond but above that yes i'm very ambitious um uh, i've always been ambitious i've always wanted to to achieve something and uh, I, I kind of feel that i I do have something to offer a, a large amount of people. You know, YouTube is a massive, massive market. Uh, and obviously I'm not going to reach everyone. And there are a lot of other kind of fellow YouTube experts that luckily I'm good friends with. Um, but I do feel I've got something else to say and something to add to to that audience. So, yeah, I think now I'm in a position to be able to speak freely, to do it in a way that I want uh to build a business that that suits me and the audience, but also my family and the way that I want to raise my kids and spend time with my wife and kids. Um, So, yeah, I think having, having this freedom and being away from the kind of conflict of interest that I've had in the past, because what I would do is I'd create these products, you know, but then I'd be scared to promote them because I'd say, oh, what if my boss sees this on LinkedIn or, you know, what if, what if my boss finds out that I'm kind of, audit in youtube channels behind you know behind their back or whatever mm. don't listen to i hope they're not listening yeah. so now that i have the freedom to you know 
you know, really own what I'm doing and go kind of 100% on it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that comes up a lot, actually, at conversations with members about this conflict of starting a business alongside having a job and, and LinkedIn in particular. It's like, well, you know, how, how do I approach that? Do I have two profiles? Do I kind of mix up what I'm doing? And then what if my boss sees it? So that comes up quite a lot. So um, what's the one most important thing that you believe is going to help you to really build upon your success over the next 12 months, Tom? I think you've already touched on it and it's definitely my network. You know, I've got really good industry contacts. Um, I know kind of all of my competitors that, you, you know, other people might consider my competitors. So my equivalents around the world, the other kind of YouTube experts, um, you know, I've just I've just landed recently from a conference in Texas that was run by one of my competitors and one of my competitors is flying me out to LA to speak at his conference in, in a few weeks. So I've got a really great network and they're so collaborative, um, you know, helping me to promote what I'm doing, helping to share what I'm doing. And I, I'm doing that in return to the, the products and services that they're offering, trying to do a lot of joint ventures actually. So, you know, whether it's referring other people or getting other people to refer me, um, but outside of the kind of YouTube world, I'm trying to surround myself with as many people, people like you, Chris, that are that have either done it or they're they're working on it, but they're you know they're serious about it. They're they're taking action because there are a lot of people. I used to be one of them that can talk the talk. They've done all the research. They've read every book. <coughs> pardon me, but there's no substitute for people that are actually taking action and that doesn't mean they have, they have to be super successful because you know even if you make a mistake they've learned something they've learned the hard way and by sharing that information with them i'm not going to make the same mistake they've made you know one of the most productive um periods um of the last few years was when i was in a really great mastermind with some really high level people you know they were way more advanced in business terms than me but because they were all in the kind of YouTube space, I had kind of really expert knowledge that was valuable enough to them for them to kind of let me in, even though I was the kind of little rough upstart. Um, so the power of masterminds, accountability groups, it's just so, so powerful. I'm also part of a few online memberships um, because I know that if I don't have someone holding me accountable, I'm just not going to take the same level of action otherwise. So yeah, I, I would definitely recommend everyone look for some kind of either online community, real world mastermind group, uh, meetup.com, whatever it might, whatever it might be, just get someone who's going to hold you accountable to what, to what you're trying to do. Yeah. And it would be remiss of me not to plug the inner circle at this point. So for anyone who's looking for that accountability, then we run the Escape the Rat Race Inner Circle group. And of course, we'd love to have you part of that with us. So final words, Tom. For anyone listening right now, they are squashed up on a train, maybe like you used to be on that trip into London every day, or they're stuck in a traffic jam and they really want to do something different. They know that there's greater things within them, but something's holding them back, probably fear. What would you like to say to them? Yeah, definitely is you need to stop wanting and start taking action. Uh, there's no substitute for just getting on with it you can plan until you're you know till you're blue in the face but things will never be perfect there'll never be a right time there'll never be a good time so just get on with it like start yesterday you know get started straight away whatever it is you're going to do you know just get that website up it's not going to be perfect straight away nothing you're going to do is going to be perfect straight away but the good news is no one's watching at the start so it's going to improve you can iron out the bugs later, but if you just if you get started, it's so much easier to improve something than it is to to start um, just to get to get started. So just take the plunge. It's not going to be great from day one, but it, it it does get easier. It does get better, and once it's out there in the world, that weight is off your shoulders, and then you can just put your energy into just making it work. So yeah, stop being a entrepreneur, and you know dive in <laughs> great stuff thanks a lot tom for being a great escapee today on escape the rat race radio good luck 
with your business for the rest of 2018. And I uh, look forward to catching up with you again real soon. Definitely. Thanks for having me, Chris. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Tom.